welcome to or back to the gray couch where we uh, believe that marriage and life really is not black and white but really many shades of gray and we get to explore those shades of gray uh so we have a better we better ourselves better our marriages happy father's day uh you are in for a treat and i don't say that lightly uh with me i have some gentlemen and they're going to introduce themselves in a minute but before then let me just say that they are successful humble fathers uh each married for over 30 years and if you know the culture i come from to find people that are successful and humble is uh is a rarity but I, i'm not going to go off on a tangent with that they are each married or married to strong-willed women like i am <laughs> and so it was imperative for me to find out for them how they were able to not just survive but thrive these 30 plus years so um i know that one idea one concept can change the course of your family your life your career and so uh, i invite you to sit with us and see if you can can glean that one thing that would change uh the direction so i'm going to let them introduce themselves in a minute uh and uh, let them take it away well thank you okay um my name is sam kuno i've been married for uh 33 years uh, 34 years this year in august uh to judith uh, my lovely wife and we're blessed with uh three daughters um and um I, I trade in agricultural inputs, uh, tractors, fertilizers, and agricultural chemicals. And uh, how many kids do you have, Uncle? Uh, three girls, three lovely girls. Yes, 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 yes. One is 33 uh, this year. Uh, the other is um, 29. And the other is 25. Yes, yes. Okay. So empty nester, okay. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, thanks for that. Uh, so my name is uh, Michael Fubar. <clears throat> I am uh, married to Josephine uh, Fubar. Uh, definitely uh, a strong and beautiful woman, as uh, OK has referred to. We have two uh, children, a son and a daughter. Um, the son is older. He's uh, 32, probably 32 this year, and uh, our daughter is 30. And um, I, I did I say I, we've been married for 33 years? No, but you just oh, did, okay. Good. I was trying to keep going to things, but yes, actually, we, it'll be 34 this August. Um, and then uh, in terms of what I do for a living, I'm in an area called operational excellence. And um, very simply, it just works with uh, process uh, efficiencies uh, within organizations. Yes, my name is Frederick Junard. Um, I've been married now for 33 years to my wife, Remy Junard. We met when I was a, a newly minted doctor. And we have, uh, that we've been married now for 33 years. We have three children, uh, Michael, Rachel, and Matthew. Michael is 33, Rachel is 29, and Matthew is 24. Uh, we are empty nesters. Uh, the only one that, that comes home periodically is uh, Matthew. He is still, he's in grad school. Uh, Michael lives there in Nashville. Uh, he has his own uh, place that he stays. He operates a business with some of his friends. Rachel is in Oregon. Uh, I'm a physician by trade. And I've met uh, Stanley now for, uh, I don't know when you came to Nashville, but we've been knowing each other for a while. I'm friends with his brother, who is a very close, a good friend of mine, uh, Kenneth. And I'm happy to be here. So I hope you guys are catching that too. We have over a hundred years of marriage exchange. If I want to do cumulative, in fact, I've only been married for 15. So uh, context, you're going to hear me call these guys uncool a lot. Uh, it's a Nigerian thing. We're not biologically related. It's an Af African thing. It's an African thing. Thank you. We're not biologically related. Mm -hmm. When someone has walked a path ahead of you and you're not close enough, you just you just give them an error and say, uncool, you know. So... Uh, <laughs> 
Thanks for staying, sitting with us. Thanks for that. All right. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, so at the, the great couch, you cannot approach marriage with three main areas that are causes for conflict. Uh, communication, money, finances, uh, sex, and also parenting, what we call the four C's. And most of the questions that we're going to ask, at least start out asking, bother along those lines. We want to see how you guys have navigated these nuances. All right, so I'll start with the first question. And, and Uncle Mike, I'll send the question to you, and it's on communication. So we receive this question from a lot of younger couples, and I've also wondered about it myself. Uh, do you think that the division of labor in your marriage has been fair between you and your wife over the years? Uh, this has been a major source of communication breakdown as each party feels that they are either undervalued or unappreciated uh, for their con contributions. So uh, what's your your take on that? Ooh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so I think that what is showing up as a communication issue is um, really a heart issue. There are a lot of things that, you know, we see above the surface that really there are things beneath the surface that um, kind of uh, generate them. And it is it, so the the Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. And so there is um, there is a, a concept of preferring the other person. And I, trust me, this is still a daily thing for me. Okay, but there's a concept of uh, preferring the other the other person. Um, that minimize, I won't say negates, but minimizes um, those kind of issues. And like I said, this is still something that I'm, I'm, I'm working on personally. What I've noticed is that most of the time, not all the time, okay, if I'm in a situation where I'm able to prefer the other person, okay, there is a value that I get from the inside, regardless of the response, mm. you know, from the other side. And the other thing is, um, I do find out most of the time that there is a positive response from the other side. It may not be reciprocal to the same magnitude as what I really have uh, uh, you know, wanted or, you know, but there, there is normally a positive response. So those two things typically happen when I'm able to actually model that. And if we break it down a little bit further to talk about love and fairness in the same sentence, I think is just setting ourselves up for issues mm -hmm. so it, just two examples real quick mm -hmm. when you think about the relationship we have with our children i think most of us would agree that we are doing more of the the loving or the care sometimes it comes back sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. and you could almost argue if you look at um even our relationships with our parents, have we actually loved them the way that they loved us? So if you look at, you know, you definitely love your children. You're not talking about fairness, okay? And then the other thing that I will say from a worldly perspective, a lot of times there's this statement that says people do stupid things when they're in love, okay? And in a backward way, because in the world, okay, you know, preferring somebody or doing something for somebody and not getting something back is considered stupid. Okay. Um, that being said, you know, they say that it happens. And I think they are confirming what the Bible already is 
explaining to us that, you know, to love unconditionally, you, you can't put that and fair in the same, you know, the same sentence. So that, the, to me, to answer your question, I think the communication issue around this division of labor is, is really about the heart. Are we going to prefer the other person? And are we going to be more realistic in our expectations? If we're expecting that when we're love, things will be fair, then you're looking for trouble. And don't get me wrong. I still, we're human beings, we're flawed. I still struggle with this. There are triggers, okay? But that's what I strive to, to help. Actually, not just with my marriage, but I think relationships in general. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Uncle Janad, what's your take on that? Is it fair? He said you can't use love and fair in the same sense. So are we saying that these ladies, they one, they don't have a point, or two, they're not being to us, fair to us, the, the fathers in the house? Yeah. Well, yes. Communication to me is, um, it's not just talking, uh, it's also listening. And obviously, if you've been with your wife or talking specifically about communicating with your wife, if you've been with your wife for a while, you know her character. And uh, it's not every uh, conversation that you have to win. Um, and then we also have to understand the context uh, in which we're coming. We are originally Africans and uh, coming from the point of view that the man is the head of the household and I mean, coming back home and that his word is law. Uh, to have an effective marriage, uh, especially in, uh, in the society where we live, you haven't left Africa, you have to understand that it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, women tend to talk quite a lot more than the guys, um, but Communication sometimes is not verbalizing, it's listening. Because uh, I know there are times that she says, uh, how many times have I told you this and you don't listen to me? Sometimes it's right, sometimes not. So the whole idea of communicating in my view uh, as it pertains to marriage, it's knowing when not to talk and when to yield to the wife. Um, because marriage is not, it's not an event. It's a, uh, it's a journey. It's a journey that, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, there is no destination, you know, uh, that oh, this is it, you know, for an effective marriage, you'll, you have to keep working on it. Mm. And so I don't see it as, um, something that, you know, with every conversation, uh, she wins or I win, um, but you know, women are more emotional than guys. And so the way we communicate with our wives and the way we communicate with our children uh, are different things. And those two, they actually merge to make a house uh, 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 conducive. You know, like when you're talking to your children, you don't want to raise your voice. Uh, remember how we were brought up, you know, I was born and raised in Nigeria. Um, and when you're trying to communicate with your children, uh, do you want your wife, if you're trying to discipline them, quote unquote discipline, is that the time that your wife will say, uh, that's not, I don't see it that way. Uh, or is it the two of you will have your own private moment and say, well, you know, what he did or how you handled it, I would have done it differently. And, you know, emotionally, you might be reacting to what that child did. But when your wife now shows you, you know, how you could have handled it better, you know, you might want to come down from your high horse and say, you know what, you're right, maybe. And I've had times that I've actually apologized to my children, you know, in the heat of the moment that, you know, I reacted as a typical African man when they were kids, that is. But then we also have to understand that we are raising children in a, uh, in a culture that is both African and American. What I mean by that is that uh, we came from a, an environment that everything was the same, you know, the environment and all that. Now, teaching your child to be successful in America 
will have to be a blend between their African background and their American living. And we don't want that to be something that's going to be, oh, well, they're in America, they can do what they want to do, or no, I'm from Africa, this is what I say this way, this is the way it's got to be. So having to blend it so that your children will be confident outside, uh, be able to express themselves, but also show respect to the people that are older than them, the people that are in high position, it's something that you have to be very careful handling. And I, in my own personal experience, I see it from the way my wife is saying, you know what, you are not in Nigeria. You have to be a little bit careful. But, you know, initially when we were young, you know, newly married, it's like whatever I say, that's the way I want it to be. You know, this is, but then when she now shows you that, you know, remember, these kids are not growing up in Nigeria. So that's what I mean by times that you have to yield and you have to listen. It's not just verbalizing, you have to listen. Sometimes I, I'm not one that speaks a lot, you know, but my wife talks quite a bit and, uh, you know, I, I see a point as time goes on. So yes, the whole idea of communicating is knowing that you cannot be on top all the time. You cannot win every argument. And there are times that you just have to say, you know what, you got it, I'm wrong, that's fine. So I'm hearing a lot about negotiation and compromise in 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 your response and and having to pivot from from the old way of doing things for how we grew up in 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 Africa to to adapting where we are uh uncle Sam I'm going to let you take on this question one more time and just I'm going to circle and bring us back again so look trying to look at it from the ladies perspective they are saying that I mean the complaints I face that we women are doing more than you men in the household you know uh and then there's the argument that listen i've worked from nine to five outside i've brought in the money isn't isn't that shouldn't that be enough to say listen here take the money do what you want to do i've done this time in the house i just want some peace and quiet you can take care of that isn't that fair division of labor or or uh from what they are saying it is a new age this is a new dispensation and so the roles have changed. I know more women are working than used to be back in the day. So both of us went out to work. Both of us are coming in back into the house. Why is it now that you are saying you're not doing any more thing in the house and I'm doing stuff in the house? Uncle Sam, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I believe uh, strongly that marriage is a partnership mm -hmm. and you bring your strengths and your weaknesses to, uh, to marriage. Mm -hmm. um, you avoid friction or reduce friction by appreciation you know uh sometimes just a oh thank you you are doing you're doing well you know i appreciate what you're doing you know um if you bring all the money for example you know and believe well that is 80 percent of <laughs> contribution to to the happiness of the marriage and you can't do what your wife does you are still um, left with a deficit, you know. So um, uh, it's easy to win an argument, but you can lose the war very easily, you know. Mm. And I think the whole point is to try to keep the home wholesome, keep the home happy, and appreciate the values of your wife. Mm. And uh, without overflogging the fact that you are the main. Um, uh, breadwinner or or the main um, um, uh, provider for the home and there are homes of course where the woman earns more and brings more uh, material gain to the table and in addition to that still caters to the home so i think it all boils down to appreciating the other person uh having a listening ear you know um we have heard that women are more emotional and sometimes they make emotional uh, decisions and utterances, you know. And at such times, um, you just say, okay, I, I can walk away and revisit the subject another time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that has helped me in my marriage. Thank yes. you for that. I'm Thank going you. to the next question. Uh, and this one is one of regrets. So, uh, I, and I have a particular colleague at work that comes to mind. And she's like, all her friends are married and she keeps just hearing about how they complain these are youngly 
newlywed. I mean, I think the one that's like six years has been married six years. They also had their first kid, and so is that if marriage is all this house, they're always complaining. They're always complaining. Maybe it's not for me. If no, there's all this trouble, I'm just going to back away. And then she's always coming. But Stan, you is, is is that your take on it? You know, I want to I want to get your 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 thoughts on that. As in, with this as a background, what's the biggest sacrifice you feel you've had to make for your marriage and your family over the years? Average of thirty three by my math. It's you guys. Uh, and would you still get married? Okay. If you, um, to answer the first question in terms of the biggest sacrifice I've had to make, I think it was about four years, yeah, roughly four years into our marriage. Uh, so, yeah, when I when we got married, I was just I was just going into grad school. Uh, my wife was at home. And then I graduated, we moved um, to South Carolina. And then at that point, uh, she was getting ready to go back to school. Um, the situation we had uh, in South Carolina at the time, within the 90s, uh, you essentially had three, um, I guess, three metropolis, uh, highly popular areas, I can't even pronounce the word, but, but you essentially had um, Charleston, uh, Columbia, and then you also had uh, Greensville, Spartanburg. So basically, we had to make a decision in terms of relocating closer to where she was going to go to school, or we had to make a decision about how we we're going to handle that. So what we did ended up giving her about a 30 minute drive um, to the campus and i ended up with a one and a half hour one-way drive to my work and this is what i did for five years um, until uh, she graduated with her phd so that's the that's the biggest sacrifice that I've had to make uh, for the family. Now, <clears throat> the other part of your question, I guess, in terms of um, whether I would uh, do it all over again or get married, it, you know, again, or do I have regrets? I have no regrets at all about getting married. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it has always been easy um, and it doesn't mean that there aren't still bumps or valleys even now after you know 30 plus years um i guess uh, to me some of this is mindset and expectations again because there are very few things that we get in life without hard work mm. um <clears throat> my brother here had gone through medical school um even becoming um dealing with agriculture and if if i remember correctly um uh, uncle sam you're 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 in nigeria and doing this is that correct that's correct and so those of us that know the way this that country is, we know that doing business in that country is not easy. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing that any of us do that I think happens without some amount of commitment and, and hard work. And if we do get something um, quickly, uh, you know, the way people talk about, hey, you don't blow or something like that. A lot of times it's not sustainable. It doesn't last. Mm -hmm. um, and so none of us, I think, went into university thinking it was going to be a cakewalk. And yet there's fruit that has come from all of that. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would definitely get married again. I'm not saying it's easy. Um that being said, the fruit that I see in terms of just the way 
you know, like my brothers were talking about partnership. I think my wife and I both feel that without each other, we wouldn't be where we are. We have been, you know, helping each other. You talk about behind every uh, successful man is a, a great woman. And I think you can flip that as well when you talk about partners, you know. So um, for your friend that is uh, concerned about um, <laughs> the, the comments she hears from other people, the, the question is, does she really want sustainable fruit? And if she does, it's something worth investing in. That, that's my perspective. Uncle Sam, I'm going to throw this to you. I like the stories. I really like the stories. So, Uncle Sam, what would you say in your uh, recollection is the biggest sacrifice you've had to make for your, um, for your marriage, your family? And would you get married again? And why? Um, let me start with the, the end of it. I, I will definitely get married again. Yes, I, I think it has been worth um, every effort I've put into it and, and we've been blessed. Um, um, people say the first 10 years are the most, uh, are the trickiest, you know, in any marriage, you know, and with that in the back of uh, one's mind, uh, I think 10 years, you're still trying to iron out some very basic things. And um, yeah, after that, uh, it becomes, I suspect, I believe in my own case, it, it became easier as we understood each other better. So I will get married again. And there's not a time when there will not be um, areas of friction, you know. Mm -hmm. But you learn to adapt, you learn to listen more, you learn to compromise, you know, and uh, so that you can have a wholesome, a wholesome family. Um, for me, um, I've made a few sacrifices, but um, when I look back, what seemed like huge sacrifices then, you know, have all come back to us, you know. Um, uh, for example, deciding to send our children to university abroad uh, meant we couldn't, all three of them, meant we couldn't do certain things at a particular time, you know. Uh, we had to put aside money early to uh, sustain the business, to build the business. So that the business can, you know, uh, pay us to fund our children, and uh, it seemed at the time we were a bit slow with certain things, you know. Uh, but uh, well, now the girls have all left; they've all uh, left. Some have gone to graduate school, and uh, one is married, and so on. And we look back, and uh, it seems God has compensated us, has compensated us uh, many times in some instances. For what seemed at that time uh, a, a huge sacrifice, yes. So I'm, I'm grateful to God I had the opportunity to do those things. I'll be married again and do them again. Uh -huh. All right. Uncle Jonad, I'm going to flip the script on you and ask you this one. If you could go back and change one thing about how you approach marriage and family, what would it be? Wow. That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, if I could go back and change something about what, well, it has to be my understanding of the modern family. What do I mean by that is uh, raising, you know, getting married, raising a family, uh, trying to survive, or uh, in a different country, um, juggling all these things together, it's it was tough initially. It was it was very tough initially. And again, I'll go back to the idea of of, of compromise. So, what will I change? I will have to recognize that you know, respecting or or, or align for uh, my wife sometimes to give her the the uh opportunity because you know my understanding initially when i was young and you know restless was that you know whatever i say the way i saw things were the way it should be but more often than not i've, I've now recognized that you know she also has things to bring in and it's not because you are the man uh that your way is is the only way um I would change a lot of things, especially in parenting, uh, realizing that 
the way I was brought up is not the way you can bring these children up, especially abroad. And also appreciating and respecting the, the strength of the wife. Um, more often than not, the man has the physical energy, has the, the uh, you know, I can do it all. But the woman, you know, they do have this emotional, I mean, a woman that goes through labor pains, I don't know if anybody has ever had their tooth uh, removed, goes through labor pains uh, and come out and wants to do it again. Um, women, uh, they are very, very strong. If you have a woman that is emotionally strong, that's the best strength in any marriage. And if you're leaning on to that, I mean, yes, you can go out and make all the money. Uh, but if you have a strong woman behind you that will support your decisions and actually advise you on some things, that's the, that's the, that's one of the strong pillars of a healthy and long lasting marriage. So what will I change is realizing the strength of the woman, realizing the strength of, if you have a woman that is uh, well-grounded and supportive uh, over and above my fear things and recognizes you that you're the one that she wants to spend the rest of her life with. If I advise, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that will help you. And if you can come down from your high horse and say, no, I'm not just a husband, you know, I'm a, I'm a partner and whatever she says, let me, let me give this a thought. Let me, let me see where it comes from. So over the years, looking back at some decisions uh, that we've made, I realized that, you know what? She's right. So long and short of it is to understand that having a wife that gives you good advice and support early on in the marriage and respecting that, you know, at the end of the day, it's 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 a very positive thing. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm tempted to delve a little bit deeper because what you're talking about is so hard to, to do. And you have, as you're talking about changing a whole mindset, especially one you you grew up in for, I mean, I'm just assuming at least first 30 years, 35 years of your life, this is the way you've always seen and done things. And there were results because at least our parents had at least results that we could see. It, can you put your finger on, on what it was or when you had that that mindset shift? Because that's really what we're trying to do, do here. We're trying to change a mindset, change a culture. And it's hard to do from the outside. A lot of times, what's that they say? When you wake up is your morning, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's enough. Whenever I wake up, that's your moment. Was it an experience you saw? Was it something that, a result that came out? What, what was it that helped you just make that that shift, you know, that pivot, whereby, you know, the, this thing is not, is not working, you know, it's not working. The trajectory we're going is not working and I need to step back and change because that's the complaint I hear a lot of wives and colleagues are talking about and then my, my husband just doesn't get it. He's still, we're, we're, and I have to obey my, the Bible says the her husband is the head, I have to obey him and he's taken us into financial ruin or oh, he cannot say this and he just doesn't want to 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 bring us get off that high horse that is heading us down the road of perdition i mean if you can put that into a bottle and sell it i think we have a magic elixir but, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm just wondering what can you can you can you I, i'll give you an example okay. i'll give you an example i'm sure your brother must have told you so when we were in residency so i'll give you a little bit a, a background um i came when i left nigeria i went to england i was an OBGYN in england and uh, when I came over here, I couldn't get, I did not get OBGYN residency. So I moved into internal medicine. And the shift from OBGYN to internal medicine was very, very traumatic for me because I was used to operating, you know, going to the operating room and all of that. But internal medicine doctors, they're deep thinkers. Long and short of it was that if my first three years in residency was very, very, very brutal. And this is coming in with two children. Mm -hmm. So she was the one holding the house, you know, taking care of the children, taking them to soccer practice, dance practice, and all those things. And I would come home. These were days that we were taking calls like every other day and that kind of a thing. I would be so tired and sometimes cranky. And sometimes when she saw the way I was, she would just take the children out to the park and stuff like that. Uh, and so she got to know, and that's what I'm, I'm talking about, the, the modern family. She got to see how other children their age 
how things were going on with them on the outside. But I was in a cocoon. I was I was sheltered. I went from home to work, back to home to work. And I, real, I was living in America, but I wasn't really living in America. Mm. So my high-handedness, having these kids when they were five, seven, was too strong for me. It wasn't working. And so she, sometimes she would let me know that you can't, I know you're tired. I know things have been rough, that kind of a thing. You just can't do it this way. You, you need to let these kids express themselves. Why am I saying this? Well, kids have grown up now. And sometimes they will sit down and say, you know, dad, remember those days that you won't let me do this, you won't let me do that. You know, and then, you know, deep down, I knew that I did it wrong, but that was the way I was brought up. And I was also under a lot of stress during residency, but she had the time you know, she also sacrificed in terms of her of her career. She had a time, she more or less raised the kids, the first, I say the first 10 years when we got here. Mm -hmm. So she saw what was going on on the outside. And she was trying to make sure that, yes, we are from Africa, but we're also raising kids in the West, in the Western world. And we need to make sure that these kids can operate independently when we're not there. I didn't see that initially. So that's one example. The other example will be in things like, I mean, I don't do a whole lot of uh, social media. So she does that. I say, you know what? There's a group of black nurses, or a, group, a group of black doctors on social media. You know, they talk about that kind of a business and that kind of a business. And I think we should look into it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, a few things that we've, through our nudging, that we've dabbled into have come back and been, it's been very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor here in America, I'm sure, you know, those that know that are related to doctors, especially if you are an immigrant doctor, mm -hmm. you come in here, you have a lot of, you know, family back in Africa. You are raising your own family. It's like a sandwich generation. You're raising your family. You want your kids to be successful and be independent and be confident when they go outside. You're trying to make money. It's like you are on a treadmill. But if you have a partner that's able to that's able to let you see how things are actually working to in such an extent that, you know, yes, we also need to enjoy ourselves. We also need to relax a little bit. Those are the kind of things that I have recognized that, yeah, I can be by the bedside, take care of patients, but I'll be very honest, my wife understands more of the American life than I do because I've just been going, 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 you know, working. But she's want to say, yeah, 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 from Africa, but relax a little bit. This is the way things work. And I'm telling you, some most of the things that she has, you know, allowed us to lean into because she's more open have been very, very rewarding. If I were by myself, you could make all the money, you could do all those things, but I'll still be your typical African man. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, this is this is where things are. But by her exposure and by virtue of her exposure, I've also learned into getting the best of America while not losing my African background. But if I was single or I was uh, that kind of uh, a husband that whatever I say goes, I was. I have friends who are like that, and I'm not knocking them. I will still be in my typical. This is the way it is. I, I don't agree. That's it. And you know, but seeing that, I've seen a lot of advantages of sometimes letting that you know take the lead. It, it's a partnership. It's not. Oh, I'm the boss. This way it goes. But I think living in. If if I were living in Nigeria, I think it would be a different story than living in England or living in America, because it's it's a it's, it's a hodgepodge of everything. And you, see, I, the way we were brought up, you know, is to show respect, you know, but Americans might take that as you don't have confidence. You know, it, when you see somebody in, in uh, outside by African upbringing, you're supposed to show respect, but that doesn't mean that I'm stupid, right? Um, but sometimes, you know, you're walking down the hall in the hospital and, you know, you show respect to some people and they don't even, you know, when they realize that you are the doctor, they're still like, 
you know, easy, you know, that kind of thing. But having somebody to show you that, yes, you can do both. It's, it's, it's something that, and you know, my wife has been one, she, she, she's more exposed. I'll have to uh, agree to that, to how life is here than I am. And I kind of, you know, I piggyback onto that and it's been, so that's one example. If you could go back and change one thing about how you approach marriage and family life, what would it be? I would listen more. Uh, I would start marriage by listening more mm -hmm. to my wife. Yeah. Um, and I would approach marriage with more humility. Oh, um, mm -hmm. your, your qualifications, the money you make, all those things, are, they're just ego things, you know. In marriage, you've got to, you know, let all those things down. Mm. and appreciate that the other person has is contributing just as much as you are but in another way you know mm. and i would listen more to my wife and uh, uh know early that oh i mean she we're from different backgrounds but she's not stupid at all you know mm. um just because she's a woman does not mean